In this lecture, we will talk about the prism and the application of the prism related to our J means and J advanced question. Like there are the condition of the minimum deviation, maximum deviation, no emergence, etc. So that we will cover. <coughs> so generally, what we think the prism is, we think like this. What we usually have seen, this is the prism and uh, it has two triangular faces and uh, three rectangular faces. And uh, our concept of the prism, of course, will be applicable to this. Particular shape, but it is also applicable to the cases where we have, like, there is a uh, glass slab, something like this, all right. And uh, now there is a ray which is falling on this glass slab, like this. So in that case, we can find out uh, the what is the shift of this object normally. What is the lateral shift? We can apply the formula of t one minus one by mu, etc. But when the ray is falling like this, in this case as well, we can apply the prism concept of the prism here to find out the certain calculation. Or there is not a perfect shape of the prism, but the prism is something like this instead of being the exact prism just there is a part of the prism so here as well we can apply the concept of the prism and we can do the related calculation from here okay so now in the prism we define uh, first of all a important quantity that is known as the angle of prism so what is the angle of prism like let's take one example like if i give you a prism like this there is a triangle of course we will have just the cross section of our prism and this angle is 60 degree this angle is uh, 90 degree and this angle is 30 degree so then if i ask you what is the angle of prism so then you might say it is 60 degree generally we think like this that the top angle is our angle of prism that quantity we can call it as the angle of prism but it is not like that the angle of prism is the angle between the two surfaces from which the ray is passing it is our angle between two surfaces through which ray is passing all right so like for example this ray through this first prism is passing like this it is incidented like this and then it becomes like this and then it goes like this in that case for sure we can say that our top angle the angle between these two surfaces is the angle of prism but if we have another uh, ray which is passing like this the ray is passing something like this take it a straight ray in that case this angle will be the angle of prism all right so let's take a shape here uh, we have a triangular shape so so here generally we will denote the angle of prism with the a and top angle generally we will say this is our angle of prism right in our diagrams now here there is one more important quantity that we want to calculate and that is the angle of deviation angle of deviation so as you might be knowing that angle of deviation uh, from the concept of the reflection and reflection there also we discuss about this angle of deviation this is the angle between the incident ray and the final uh, reflected or the refracted ray so something like in the reflection we discussed there so this is the surface and uh, the ray is incidenting like this so if it is incidenting at i degree so then it will reflect at the i same i so then what is happening here is this ray instead of going like this now because of the reflection it is going certain uh, in certain other direction so then the angle between the initial direction and the final direction is our angle of deviation this is delta now angle of deviation we need to find out in the direction where the ray is rotating now in case of the prism this angle of deviation uh, let's take a incident ray here so first incident ray will do the refraction from the first surface and because if we take outside medium air and this generally our prism will be made out of glass glass is a denser medium compared to the air medium so then mm, the ray will be going toward the normal so if we draw a normal over here like this so then the ray is going like this all right and then this is the another normal again for this normal what is happening is now the ray is going from the denser medium from the glass to the air so that's why the ray will again get away from the normal here all right so here it is getting near to the normal and here it is getting away from the normal okay so it is refracting two times that's why there is a deviation two times and that deviation angle total we need to find out for that we will assume some of the quantity here is our angle i i is called as angle of incidence i is our angle of incidence so angle of incidence is the angle between our first surfaces where the first time the ray is hitting and the normal of that surface and then we have the r1 and r2 r1 is the angle of refraction by the first surface refraction for first surface and uh, r2 is the angle of incidence of first sur second surface all right and there is e is the angle of emergence where the ray is emerging out it is called as emerging ray and the angle between the normal of that surface and the e emerging ray is the angle of emergence now one thing we need to find out is the angle of deviation and that or we will also calculate is the relation between the r1 r2 and a all right so here if we take this part this point o a b and p this has four sides so that's why total sum of the angle will be 360 degrees so you can say that the for this o a p b shape what you can say that total sum of the angle the angle o 
plus angle A plus angle P plus angle B will be 360 degree because it has four sides all right so this angle we know angle A this one we are taking this is the angle between the surface and the normal that will also be 90 degree and this angle will also be 90 degree so angle A and B is 90 degree and angle O is the angle A itself so let's substitute the value then it is A plus 90 degree plus angle P plus 90 degree equals to 360 degree so from here angle P becomes 180 minus A okay then the, there is another thing we can take the triangle APB look carefully what is happening here is there is a triangle that is forming at this place look here this is our triangle right this triangle is forming and we can say that the in this triangle a b p in this triangle a b p we can say that the angle r1 plus r2 plus angle p is 180 degree all right now angle p value we know from this equation what is that that is 180 minus a so let's substitute that value so r1 plus r2 plus 180 minus a becomes 180 okay, 180 180 cancelled out so r1 plus r2 is equals to a this will be a very important relation and 90 percent cases we can apply r1 plus r2 is equals to a and there had been some question where we cannot apply r1 plus r2 equals to a if the ray is not uh, directly hitting like this and these normals are in other way one normal is like this and another normal is like this that the ray is forming at the angle from the other side of the normal right so in that case we cannot apply but here we can apply this rule r1 plus r2 is equals to a right okay now we want to find out the angle of deviation so again i am drawing the ray i am just drawing the ray itself so first ray is falling like this on the first surface then it is doing the reflection from there and it is going like this okay so it is going like this and then after it is going like this so here is uh, one normal right here is another normal okay and this is the direction where a ray would have passed if there was no other medium here as well if there was no other medium then ray would pass like this but because of this other medium this ray is deflecting like this i'm just drawing this ray itself if you look in this diagram here i have taken this ray and i have just drawn the diagram so look here what is happening is this is this total angle is i right and this angle is r1 i'm calling this as the delta one this is the angle of deviation at the first place now if you look this total angle can i call it as the i of course i can call it right so what is the delta one from this diagram from here let me put it so from here you can say that delta 1 is what is the bigger angle i minus the r1 okay now what about this place if you look here this is r2 right and this is angle is e right if this is r2 this is r2 then let me do it again here is our r2 opposite angle can i say that this is delta 2 the angle of deviation at this place so from here what i can say is what is the delta 2 delta 2 is the bigger angle minus the smaller angle bigger angle is in minus r2 now tell me what is the direction of delta 1 direction of delta 1 means is it a clockwise direction or the anti-clockwise direction in which direction the ray is rotating so at this place this ray is rotating in the clockwise direction the second place also you can say ray is rotating clockwise direction that's why if you want to find out the total angle of deviation you will add these two individual deviation right if there would have been the other case we would subtract these two deviations okay so total angle of deviation i can say total angle of deviation delta delta is delta 1 plus delta 2 okay so that becomes delta is i plus i what is the delta 1 delta 1 is i minus r1 and the delta 2 is e minus r2 so that in total becomes delta e equals to i plus e minus r1 plus r2 isn't it now we did do, did the calculation of r1 plus r2 what was that a can i say that the total angle of deviation is delta which is i plus e i is the angle of incidence on the first surface and e is the angle of emergence and a is the angle of the prism so i plus e minus a is the deviation angle for in general all right so now we have got this we can apply but some situation where we cannot say r1 plus r2 equals to a there we cannot apply and the 
In cases where TIR will take place, we cannot say the deviation. So first we need to check whether there is a TIR or the any other case. Then if there is not that case, it is a simple case, then we can say that the total angle of deviation is I plus E minus A. Now next we want to draw the, the diagram between the angle of deviation and angle of incidence. So we want to draw the diagram between our graph between angle of deviation and uh, angle of incidence. Okay, this is a important graph because this graph tells us the two important condition that what will be the maximum deviation and what will be the minimum deviation. All right. So here I have the expression for the delta. Delta is I plus E minus A. So by looking at this, you can think that uh, the delta is I plus E minus A. So delta is proportional to E. So it will be a straight line graph. But that is not the case. Why? Because E is also variable. E is the emergent angle that is also variable. So we want to replace it. So first thing is, let's again copy the diagram. So here I have this diagram of the emerging ray and the incident ray. Let me just copy it. Okay. So, okay. Look in this diagram. Here is our E and this is R2. Let's assume that the refractive index of prism is angle of prism is mu so one thing i can say from this surface is uh, mu sin r2 is equals to sin e and because the refractive index of the second medium is one that's why i am not putting here so from here i can write down the e that becomes sin inverse mu sin r2 but the problem is that r2 is also a variable and that is not in the terms of e so let's put the R2 in the terms of E. So for that, first I will need the R1. So I can say that the sin I is equals to mu sin R1. All right. So from here, R1 becomes sin inverse of 1 by mu sin I. Okay. Then I know the relation. What is that relation? That R1 plus R2 is equal to A. So from here, one thing we got, we can get is, we can get is that uh, R2 is A minus R1. Okay. So here we have this emergent angle, emergent angle is sin inverse of mu sin R2 and instead of R2 I can write down A minus R1 and instead of R1 I can write down sin inverse 1 by mu of sin I. Okay. Of course, it may seem you a tough equation. No need to worry. We are just finding out this equation so that we can understand the relation between delta and I. So delta is I plus E. E is sine inverse of mu sine A minus sine inverse of 1 by mu sine I. Okay. Alright, so this is E and then we have here A, so that minus A. Okay, so this is it. Now here it becomes very confusing how it will look like, how this graph will look like. So one thing we can understand is that if I increase the I value, the of course the value of the delta may increase from one point. The other point may be that because sine inverse is also negative. So it may also decrease. Okay. Now I am drawing a graph here. Okay. This is this graph is taken from the observation. So or you can also understand with the help of this one. Okay. And uh, we can also apply our analysis and from there we can give the answer for this one. See if I ask you what is the condition where we will have the maximum deviation because we are doing the deviation and I. And just think about it. What can be the condition for the maximum deviation? So this is our diagram here, right? If in ray is inciting in, incidenting in such a way that if the ray emerging out is parallel to the surface, it is having a grazing incidence that is possible whenever there is a ray coming out from the denser medium, the grazing incidence is possible, right? So if the ray emerging out is a grazing ray, in that condition, we will have the maximum deviation. Let's suppose at that angle, I is IG. I am referring it as IG. Alright. So, here is the angle. I am calling it as I equals to IG. 
at that point we will have the maximum deviation why because the ray emerging out is having a 90 degree deviation at least that is having the maximum deviation and then the meanwhile as well we will have the deviation because of that the total deviation is maximum okay what about the point before it before it of course there will not be any ray emerging out why because the angle of incidence on the second surface will become greater than the uh, greater than this value of our critical angle so because of that there is no emergence right okay so the, then what will happen if we increase the i this angle of the deviation will decrease and it will be minimum at some particular value you can think about this particular value okay what is that that value will be i equals to e if it is symmetric in that condition we will have minimum deviation okay again you are increasing uh, decreasing the angle and then you will go for the negative angle okay instead of putting the ray like this okay you can also put the ray like this in that condition there will be a again a point which will have the maximum deviation and that condition is i equals to ig again so i equals to ig is possible two times because we can have two types of the ig one from the up another from the down so that's why the maximum deviation is two times and the minimum deviation is only one time now we have general form of deviation what is that deviation is i plus e minus e now for the minimum deviation angle of emergence is equal to the angle of incidence so at this at that place can i say minimum deviation is i and e is also i so that's why i plus i minus e so minimum deviation becomes 2i minus a so this value is our minimum deviation 2i minus a of okay now there is the another point where we have the maximum value this point there are two points here for the maximum value what is the condition is again let me draw the diagram so that you can understand this situation of the maximum deviation so here we have our triangle okay and the prism and the ray is incidenting like this it has gone a one deviation and then it is going to the second deviation okay now now if the emerging ray becomes like this in that condition we will have the maximum deviation okay so what is the angle of emergence at this point e is 90 degree and i is such that the it is having a gradual incidence so that is ig so delta maximum is i is ig e is 90 so that becomes delta maximum delta maximum is i g plus 90 minus a okay so what is the maximum deviation value uh, i g plus 90 minus a minimum deviation value is 2 i minus a so the value will vary in between that for the deviation if we what if if we have an angle greater than ig in that condition we will have the tir and the ray will not pass through the prism okay so next here we want to derive the condition for the minimum deviation as we know that uh, from the previous discussion that if i is equal to e in that condition we will have the minimum deviation right so minimum deviation angle as you know that the deviation angle is i plus e minus a if you don't know this how we have uh, come to this formula then you can watch the previous lecture so delta is i plus e minus a and if i is equal to e in that condition we have the minimum deviation so minimum deviation can be written down as i plus i minus a that becomes 2i minus a okay so delta minimum is 2i minus a so this is one formula of the delta minimum another delta minimum i want to find out in the terms of the new refractive index of the uh, prism and the angle of prism so let's suppose this is our prism here and the angle of prism is a and refractive index is mu so then what should be the uh, minimum angle of deviation that i want to find out so a ray is falling in such a way that this ray is suffering the equal angle of emergence as the angle of incidence so if this is i so then this is i also okay so <coughs> i want to find out that for that i will apply the snail flow so let's apply the snail flow between this one okay so first let me clarify some some things from here we had this one as r1 this one as r2 right and we had that the r1 plus r2 is a okay now look here if the ray is going from the a to glass then the angle is changing from i to r1 and now if it is going back from glass to air the angle is final angle is i then what should be the initial angle r2 
should it be equal to R1 or not? Yes, it should be equal to R1, right? If you don't understand by this, then I can find out using the snail's law. What is that new first one? If I apply at the first surface, then I can say that mu mu is one for the air. So one sine i is equals to mu sine r1. Okay. If I apply at the second surface, then I can say that uh, outside one it, it is emerging then one sine i. And the, when it is incidenting, what is that medium mu? And the angle is r2, so that's why sine r2. Okay, just you divide, this will be cancelled out. So from here, one thing you can get is sine r1 equals to r2, so that's why r1 is equal to r2. r1 is equal to r2, then you can say that the r1 plus r2 is a, so r1 plus r1 is equal to a. Okay, so 2 r1 is equal to a, so r1 becomes a by 2. r1 becomes a by 2. Okay, now again, let's apply the Snell's law here on the first surface so then i can see that the sine i is mu sine r1 if i can put the value of i and the r1 in the terms of the delta minimum then i can find out the delta minimum from there right okay so if you look at this equation delta minimum is 2i minus a from here we can calculate the i what is that 2i is equal to delta minimum minus a so i becomes from here delta minimum okay this is plus plus a divided by we know i we know r1 so then we can find out the delta minimum so sin i i is uh, delta minimum plus a divided by 2 is equals to mu sin r1 r1 is a by 2 okay by simplifying this one we can find out the delta minimum so this is our final equation without any assumption here right we can also find out the mu value from here mu value becomes in the terms of the delta minimum mu value becomes the sin delta minimum plus a divided by 2 divided by sin a by 2 this is our new value okay now let's take the approximations what approximations we are taking is the thin prism condition okay the thin prism condition so what is the thin prism condition is that our prism is very thin so when we take a very thin prism so in that condition angle of the prism will be very small right a will be very small all right if a is very small the ray is incidenting on the surface okay the surface i will be also very small right and that's why all other values will also be very small so that's why these sine theta can be taken as theta when the value is very small sin theta can be taken as theta when the very value is very small so then we can apply this approximation and using this approximation i can say that the from this equation i am writing it down delta minimum plus a divided by 2 is equals to mu a by 2 okay so from here 2 to cancel out so i am getting the delta minimum delta minimum is mu a minus a right or now this is a very important formula of delta minimum in the terms of mu delta minimum is mu minus 1 multiplied by a so this is our delta minimum when we have taken this condition of thin prism and now there is one more thing whenever there is a thin prism can we take all the conditions of the delta as delta minimum itself why because the ray which will be incidenting will be near to the normal itself and second when the ray will be traveling r1 and r2 will be r1 and r2 will be equal why because the ray is hardly able to travel anything right so that's why it is kind of a straight line itself and these two surfaces are kind of parallel itself right when the angle is very small that's why i can take r1 and r2 equal that's why in case of thin prism all the delta are the delta minimum itself that's why whatever the formula of delta minimum is there i can apply for the thin prism so if in the question they give us that this is the thin prism then directly we can say delta is mu minus 1 multiplied by a or delta is delta minimum now the next one is condition for maximum deviation or the gracing emergence here both conditions will be together whatever the condition of the maximum deviation is there that itself becomes the condition for the gracing emergence so first thing is uh, what is the gracing emergence so it means that the ray which is emerging out is parallel to the surface like this 
okay and that's why you can think intuitively from here that this is the condition for the maximum deviation as well why because the emerging ray is having the maximum deviation of the 90 degree from its surface right okay and the ray is falling like this so let's take this ray and this ray is falling at such angle that this angle gives us the emerging uh, gracing emergence so that's why i am calling this angle as ig here is our e e is 90 degree okay so my drawings are not perfect you can roughly consider the emergence angle as 90 degree no issue in that right so here is r1 here is r2 okay so one thing we can say is r2 is critical angle isn't it r2 is critical angle right so what i can say is that the sine mu sine r2 is 1 sine 90 right so sine r2 becomes 1 by mu okay second condition we have that r1 plus r2 is a right so from here i can write down the r1 r1 becomes a minus r2 all right so then our angle of incidence which is uh, giving us the gracing emergence and that's why we are calling it as ig so that ig we want to find out that will be the condition for our maximum deviation right okay so that ig to find out that ig i am applying this nail slow on this surface i can say that the sine ig is equals to mu sin r1 all right so then sin ig becomes mu sin and r1 becomes r1 becomes a minus r2 okay so from here i am rewriting this equation here sin ig is mu and i am opening the bracket so that becomes sin a cos r2 minus cos a sin r2 all right so sin ig value becomes mu and cos r2 look here i have sin r2 can i find out the cos r2 from here cos r2 becomes we as we know that sin r2 is opposite divided by hypotenuse so we need to find out the adjacent adjacent will be the hypotenuse square which is mu square minus opposite square 1 divided by mu okay so this is the value of cos r2 so then here we have sin a and this becomes under root mu square minus 1 divided by mu and minus cos a and this sin a r2 sin r2 becomes 1 by mu so that is 1 by mu let's multiply the mu inside so then we have sin ig is equals to sin a so this mu is cancelled out sin a under root mu square minus 1 multiplied by uh, minus cos a so ig becomes sin inverse of sin a multiplied by mu square minus 1 minus cos a so that is our angle of emergence so if you want to memorize this condition you can memorize this will help us in the j advanced questions but if you cannot memorize then keep this thing in the mind that if the emerging ray is uh, the gracing ray itself so in that condition we will have the maximum deviation okay and this condition also becomes the condition for the gracing emergence okay now next one we want to find out next we want to find out what is the condition for the no emergence so what is the meaning of that is that we want to form a prism in such a way that if you if you give a ray on that prism if you uh, if you incident a ray on that prism so in that after going inside the prism of at the second refraction it will not come out 
from the surface so like this if this uh, whatever the angle of incidence you take right if the ray is going like that it is hitting in such a way that it is doing the tir at that place because of that it is not able to come out and now we are changing this i incident angle from 0 to 90 degree all the places still we are not able to take out any ray from this uh, prism from the other side then that is the condition for no emergence right so now in the condition of no emerge emergence we want to find out that a ray which is having the least which is having the least uh, angle of incidence on the surface to on the surface to keep in mind this condition carefully understand it so this is the surface one surface two i am taking the surface one and two and one is the our incident surface and the second surface is the surface from where the ray is coming out all right so now try to visualize it that if the ray which is falling on the second surface it is having a least angle whatever the least angle is possible right if that ray is not able to come out from that surface then all other ray falling on the surface too which have more angle compared to this ray will not be able to come out right although i think it becomes complicated so look here this is the surface too try to recall that concept of the tir right so here this ray is falling like this uh, sorry this is our normal and the ray is falling like this this ray is having least angle with the normal this angle is let's suppose theta all the ray other ray which are falling at all other angle are having more angle so the other ray are between the theta to 90 degree okay like this on the second surface right if this ray is not able to come out it means this theta is equal to critical angle then all other rays angle will be greater than critical angle if the angle of incidence from the denser medium to rarer medium is greater than the critical angle in that condition there will not be any ray coming out right okay so that's why what is the condition for no emergence is the least angle at the second surface becomes the critical angle so we are taking the r2 r2 is critical angle right okay r2 is critical angle or greater than critical angle r2 is critical angle and or the greater than critical angle okay and this ray is having the least angle now try to understand this one we have three here uh, variables i r1 and r2 and we know this relation r1 plus r2 is a all right now you want to keep r2 least and this least value is c if r2 is a least then r1 will be maximum right r1 will be maximum now can you tell me what is the value of the maximum angle in the denser medium if we can keep any value of angle of incidence from the rarer medium the maximum angle of incidence can be how much 90 degree right so maximum angle of incidence is 90 degree then the r1 also becomes critical angle right if you remember this condition that ray is coming from the rarer medium and it is having a grazing incidence so in that condition ray will refract in the denser medium at the critical angle okay so now again go to the condition of no emergence the condition of no emergence is that r2 should be least angle of r2 should be critical angle right and at that point r1 is maximum and that maximum value of r1 is also a critical angle now r1 plus r2 is a so r1 is uh, equal to critical angle r2 should be greater than critical angle and we have r1 plus r2 equals to a right let's add both of the, these values so i am adding the equal and uh, greater than uh, greater than value so it is a kind of inequality which we are solving okay after solving this inequality what i can say is that r1 plus r2 value should be greater than 2c 
ਵੇ ਸੀ ਇਸ ਦੀ ਕ੍ਰਿਟੀਕਲ ਐਂਗਲ ਉਹ ਥੀਟਾ ਸੀ ਰਾਈਟ ਓਕੇ ਨਾਓ r1 r2 ਇਜ਼ a ਰਾਈਟ ਸੋ r1 r2 ਇਜ਼ a ਸੋ ਦੈਨ a ਵੈਲਿਊ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਰਾਈਟ ਇਟ a ਵੈਲਿਊ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਬੀ ਗ੍ਰੇਟਰ ਦੈਨ 2 ਟਾਈਮਸ ਆਫ c ਰਾਈਟ ਸੋ ਦੈਨ ਕੈਨ ਆਈ ਸੇ a 2 ਵੈਲਿਊ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਬੀ ਗ੍ਰੇਟਰ ਦੈਨ c ओके वेरी गुड नाउ आई कैन टेक द साइन बोथ ऑफ द साइड्स सो देन इफ आई टेक साइन बोथ ऑफ द साइड्स साइन a 2 इज ग्रेटर देन साइन c राइट बाय चेंजिंग बाय टेकिंग अ फंक्शन बोथ ऑफ द साइड ऑफ इनइक्विलिटी दैट इनइक्विलिटी विल नॉट चेंज राइट ओके सो व्हाट इज द साइन c साइन c इज 1 बाय म्यू सो इफ साइन a 2 इज ग्रेटर देन 1 बाय म्यू वैल्यू सो इन दैट कंडीशन देयर इज नो इमर्जेंस if we whatever the angle of incidence we keep it on the first surface there will not be any ray coming out from the second surface i am saying just the second surface the ray may come out from the third surface fourth surface or other surfaces right okay 